evening and welcome to the API's Iron Government program for Thursday, April the 14th, 2022. Iron Government brings you the latest on government's plans, programs, policies and projects. I am Bavin Olver. Just ahead on this evening's program, we continue the discussion with seismic engineer Cameron Alexander. The curriculum unit within the Ministry of Education hosted a retreat for education officers. The recently concluded school band has been hailed a success. These stories and more are just ahead, but first let's join Inga Jackson for Newswatch. Good evening and welcome to Newswatch for April 14, 2022. I am Inga Jackson. The Grenadines come alive this weekend with the 2022 Easter Regatta after a two-year absence due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A number of activities are expected to take place on Beckway, Union Island and Miro. These include a gospel concert, a number of races, traditional boat races and lots of entertainment. Easter Vol in the Grenadines is one of the major income earners to the tourism sector at this time of year. The National Parks, Rivers and Beaches Authority wishes to notify the general public that all tourism and recreation sites that are currently open to the public will be temporarily closed on Friday, April 15, 2022. The general public is also asked to take notice that the Orasol Pond Recreation Park and Lasso Frere Cross Country Trail will remain closed over the Easter weekend. Site rehabilitation and improvement works are currently on the way at the Oria Sol Pond, while the Lassafre Trail and the volcano itself continue to pose significant danger and the risk of injury to hikers. Therefore, the public is advised to desist from visiting these sites until further notice. The Liberty Lodge Boys Training Center held an exhibition on Wednesday, 13 April 2022, under the theme Empowering Young Males Through Entrepreneurship. Visitors were greeted with handcrafts made from residents of the center and pan music. A small ceremony was held to declare the expo open. Social skill instructor Cherise Regisford Durant says the center remains committed to teaching the boys life skills and the program was part of that. The boys put hours into the products that you see before you. They use all natural materials. And with the aid of each member of staff here, they were successful. I am very proud to say that they have been looking forward to this day for a very long time. The completion of five-week Coast Guard basic seamanship culminated with a graduation ceremony at the Calakwa Town Hall recently and saw 12 members of Coast Guard service graduating from the program after successfully completed the rigorous training. With a pass mark of 60%, the participant average score was 76.8%. A total of nine officers and three trained police officers participated in the sessions. Special awards went to OS Ordinary Seaman Wakiba Benjamin, who obtained 87.8% for his outstanding academic performance and also walked away with the prize for the best navigation with 97.4%. OS Benjamin also gained the award for the top overall performance. Best at practical went to CGA Orlando Frederick with 85.7%, who also copped the top physical training award with 88.4%. OS Tawana John took the top spot for the most outstanding in rules of the road with a score of 100%. Speaking at the ceremony, Deputy Commissioner of Police Frankie Joseph told the officers that having a positive attitude is key in executing their duties. It was Lou Holtz who said, and I quote, and this is very important and I want you to pay specific attention. Ability is what you are capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do. Attitude determines how well you do it. End of quote. <clears throat> Graduates, this statement is full of meaning and can serve as a motivating force if correctly applied when you are doing your jobs. As law enforcement officers, you must first possess the ability to do the job, then be motivated to do it. 
And to do so effectively, you must possess the right attitude towards it. You can be the most qualified person and capable officer in your unit or organization, but your attitude towards your job and to the people whom you have taken an oath to solve can hamper your success and progress and that of the organization. Thank you for watching Newswatch. I am Inga Jackson. Good evening. Welcome back. You are watching the APIs and Government. On our last program, we brought you an update on the current monitoring activities at the Latifre Volcano. As we continue our discussion with seismic engineer Cameron Alexander, we'll hear about the new initiatives for setting up seismic stations in the Grenadines and other important responsibilities of the Volcano Monitoring Unit, which he oversees. Is the monitoring right now set to where there are certain parameters? which is acceptable and then maybe you might get a a lot um, when things change drastically is it set up like that yes it is set up like that but the, because of the constant monitoring mm -hmm. you'll pick up any changes. yes you'll, any changes will be picked up unless there's a a sudden <laughs> boom or <a> sudden <laughs> something right yeah so okay okay yeah okay. So the seismic um, activity that you're monitoring and the network um, that's related to that, how is that set up and what are the maybe instruments and so on that is monitoring that currently? Well, it's set up where you have a, a seismic station. Break it down. Simple seismic station has the seismometer, has the GPS. The, some seismic station has a, a built-in GPS right um there's the digitizer and there's the radios for the communication and then there's the battery and the solar panel for power basically the seismometer is the instrument that measures or detects the ground shaking and the digitizer change that signal in a sense from let's just say analog to digital mm -hmm. where it could be transmitted via the radio frequency or radio wave to Belmont or to one of the, the sides around. For example, Bamboo Range, you mentioned earlier Bamboo mm -hmm. Range. Yeah. Yes, Bamboo Range has one of the post hole seismometer. It's down probably like, like 15 meters or so depth. In the earth, yeah. In the earth, right. And then that is telemetered to Georgetown where it's received at the, our warehouse and then that in that data or that seismic information is plugged into the G1 network and then transmitted to Belmont and to Trinidad. Right, where most of the monitor is done. Done, yes. And what am I looking at here? So this is just... This okay, is, those, those, those... Um, this is just the, the recorded data that right, comes in. Right. Right, from a uh, It looks station. like a lot of activity Yep, in that is from, that was from Forestry Station and then... Vehicles. Vehicles. Yeah, vehicles, yes. How can you yes. When you pull that. up this, when you actually go into it and pull it up, you could mm -hmm. actually see, you know, the um, the frequency signature. Right? And mm -hmm. this is the one of the stations. Right? Oh. Yeah. So the frequency signature is basically like a pattern that yes, would... Yes. Yes, you know, yes. follow a certain activity. Yep. 
Alright. And then this is bamboo range. You notice bamboo yes. range is bit a bit looks a bit quieter than, yeah, than all these stations because of the depth it. at which it's in. Yeah. Yeah. So that even it is actually uh, a right. uh -huh. water. Right. So this is actually this. So right, so here is from um. Yeah, this is actually the bamboo range station, and all here that you seen it from could be a possible aha. Uh -huh. Like heavy water, heavy water coming down. Right. And then on the far left is the station at the summit, which is very noisy due to <laughs> wind. <laughs> so all this could be. Oh, no, noise, noise shaking of the antenna pole and what have you. Okay. Although if, if you look at it, it might look like an event. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. when you actually click on it, mm -hmm. if it was an actual event, it would have been a bit more dense. Right, yeah. right. Dense than that. Okay, but like you yes. said, there's a particular pattern right. that you probably look for when there's anything and then the you know, to the be concerned about. And, and all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, okay. So basically. And you say you could pull this up on your phone as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you can pull it up on your phone. Um, recently, we had some unfortunate reports of vandalism and uh, theft at, you know, sites. Have you guys rectified that? Or I mean, I mean, this is a moment for you to, of course, chide or caution people about uh, of the importance of, 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 of these sites. Yes, it was unfortunate. We are in the process of, of rectifying that, that site. It's, I would say it's a, a selfish act. Definitely. It's the instruments I use to monitor the volcano and to keep us safe. So while we have a, a robust network, if you, if you break it, then it leaves deficiency. It's just like a chain. Right. If you cut it at one point, it, it gives you a deficiency. So that is what that person or persons did. They kind of break that that strong link that we had yeah. in, in that sense. What about um, actual putting things in place to maybe prevent this from happening, whether it be um, securing with cameras and so on? Is there any planning on the way to, to kind of There's rectify some, some of these deficiencies? We have some points or we have some discussions on the table right. where we're exploring possibilities of what could go forward, of how, how, how we can go forward. But I, I'll tell you this, in the earlier stage of the monitoring, at one point they, with Mr. Lynch and those guys at Seismic used to build these like little shelters around the thing and persons used to actually go with sledgehammer, yes, and break them and try to get in. Wow. We did signage and all that. So we have to <laughs> it's a um it's a challenge. It's a it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. I must say it's a challenge. But we, we try our best to see how we can mitigate that that challenge or right. what, what best we can do. But I think sometimes if we as individuals, this is apart from me being embedded here, as in I work with Seismic or I work with Nemo. If you and I do not see the need or do not own these things, I'll say, well, this is what benefits me or protects me. Then sometimes you could say you're fighting a losing battle. Right. Because if I don't see the need to protect or guard against such, it will continue to happen. Definitely, so. definitely. Are there any plans to maybe bring in new equipment or new sites or anything? Is there going forward any new plans for upgrades? Yes. At current, we have this project, VEEP, Volcano Emergency Project, where we, we're hoping to have more equipment where we would deploy them in the Grenadine Islands. Because a couple of years ago, there was this project that they were doing some testing or some sampling of seismic data where we deployed stations throughout all the Grenadine Islands and that at the end of that the report proved that 
their seismic data that we could gather from these wow. other if you see signs of things happening in the grenadines is it likely to have a linkage to what's happening on the mainland or is it separate or yeah. separate systems you have to bear in mind that we are at the edge of a plate boundary right so we are a charged seismic se seismic area so in terms of related I can't say yes, I can't say no, right. but more analysis is done or yeah. need to be done right. with, you know, to analyze these data and okay. support. So I know Hence that, the, the, yes, the, the, the need for setting up nuance. Right, because those, those, those equipment were deployed for, I think it was eight months. Right. And within that eight months. You saw the, enough. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. There's, we saw enough data mm -hmm. where we could look into or with that those persons who are interested can look into that because there isn't really any benchmark data per se right. then that that data that was collected could be used as a form of a benchmark so they hence the need for or hence the plan to have more equipment so we could deploy them in the right. uh, uh, right. islands because of course, I mean, there's also the threat of tsunamis in those yes. locations. And yes. I guess any sort of monitoring of that would be able to prevent or at least keep people ahead of, of ahead of, of things. And right. Uh, and then there's right. Kikam Johnny right offshore. Exactly. Um, exactly. Union Island. And the sooner you get the data in, the better chances people have a <laughs> yes. you know. Yes, but apart from that, in terms of monitoring tsunamis and so what what we have we have to an island at the moment are tide gauges. Oh, tide gauges. Yes. What, is, what are those? They, are, they form a part of the IOC network which monitors the tsunami. So we have two on island at current. One in Chatebele and one in Calico. Right. What that does, that measures the wave height, biometric pressure um, and so forth. Okay. Okay. So, and there's plans that we could, be, there's plans or there's discussions we're having to probably get two more or get more so we could deploy them in the Grenadine Islands. Okay, what about the Windward Coast? I mean, those Chatebele and um, Calico are kind yes, of... Yes, yes, yes. All uh -huh. that too, we, we're hoping to have one at, on the Windward Coast also because we're in discussion with MET and so forth. Right. Because MET also use the data from, from those... Um, the Met Office. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Those data. Wonderful, wonderful. Could you say no? Safely, the coast is clear. We don't know for how long, for the foreseeable future, but the coast is clear and Vincentians can rest assured that things have really kind of died down. Well, the assurance I can give you is that we have a, a robust seismic network where it is being constantly monitored so if there's any change or any need for alert you will be informed all right thank you so much don't go away iron government continues after the break The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines through the Ministry of Public Service, Consumer Affairs and Sports is pleased to announce its Employees Assistance Program. The EAP aims to enable a positive work environment and safeguard the holistic health and well-being of all employees while increasing productivity and improving national output. The EAP unit would like all public servants to know how valued they are to the country. The unit is located within the St. Vincent Cooperative Building, Rose Place, Kingstown. Contact us at telephone number 485-6912 or email eap.mps at gov.vc We care about you. Welcome back. The Curriculum Development Unit within the Ministry of Education hosted a retreat for education officers in efforts to enhance the mandate of the government to give students across the country continued access to education and to build well-rounded citizens. The API Yinka Chambers was present and filed this report. 
a capacity building exercise for education officers dubbed retreat cdu 22 began in earnest on tuesday april 12th under the theme remodeling education for resilience and sustainability at the sunset shores conference room confident that at the end of the session participants would have gained new insights and that combined expertise knowledge and willpower will effect positive change in the country senior education officer for curriculum alia gums dyer noted the need for strong system leadership dyer went on to outline the objectives of the retreat and how they will benefit not only those present but teachers and students across this nation education officers must be deeply engaged with the organization of teaching learning curriculum and assessment in order to ensure that learning is increasingly personalized for students therefore our objectives here today are first, to re-examine our roles as system leaders, to reflect on our practice and how we collaborate with, stak with stakeholders to meet the needs of 21st century learners. Then we will discuss ways in which these needs have or have not been met. Second, we will examine the challenges and risks that tend to hinder our progress, after which we would construct appropriate mitigations to ensure effective implementation and sustainability of education programs. Thirdly, we seek out solutions. We will explore the underpinnings of an important program, that is, the OECS Program for Educational Advancement and Relevant Learning, the PEARL, which is being implemented across the OECS. In so doing, we aim to establish practical linkages with our National Plan for Education. Finally, we aim to build cooperation, a collaborative spirit, and program ownership of the poll in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Keynote speaker and Minister of Education and National Reconciliation Curtis King stated that in all that is said and done, teachers and students are the most important elements of our education systems and that the persons within the curriculum unit must focus on the seriousness of its part in monitoring what takes place at schools across the country. This event is not designed only for us to have wonderful presentations, but more importantly, it is designed to allow us to reflect, to think critically of the issues that existed before the pandemic and those issues that today have become even sharper in focus because of the pandemic. And therefore, I will wish that during this session, we will come up with practical and workable strategies to make our education more resilient and sustainable. To be sure, COVID-19 impact has threatened, in many respects, to roll back the progress that we have made in the post-independence period, especially progress relating to access and equity in our education system. I want to make the point that even before COVID-19 and the volcano, we were grappling with issues of access. If we take, for example, one sector, a very important sector of our education system, early childhood education, despite the progress and the magnificent progress that we have made 
in the post-independence period. Nevertheless, as a government, we have given our commitment to continue to expand the access for our early learners to put them in a position where, where they could get a better start prior to their entry to primary education. So that the fact that we are making that commitment is an indication that even before pandemic, we were grappling with that issue of access. Yes, and despite the magnificent progress that we have made in terms of equity, we still have within our system where there is a challenge in getting resources to areas that face a deficit with regards to these resources. So that today, we still have issues. And I'm saying this is despite the magnificent progress we have made, where there are some schools that are challenged to produce well-rounded science students in an era where science and technology is so crucial to our advancement as a society. And so I'm saying we still have to deal with issue of access. One of the major challenge, occupation, if you like, of our education system, our educators in general, is the whole idea of not only making our education relevant, but providing an education that is lifelong. Because we have come to recognize in this fluid society, community, if you like, that we live in, where changes are constant. The education that we receive in the formal school setting, even the education that we receive at university, or for that matter, the training that we get at the professional level, despite the good virtues and quality of these. The truth is, in a constantly changing world, there is no guarantee that such education and training will remain relevant. I even put you in a position to earn a decent living, which, in the final analysis, is what our education is about. Hmm? Providing you the individual with the know-how, with the opportunity to earn a decent living. Providing the society with the resources, human. Some people refer to it as human capital that is required to transform our economy. And we are very much in this mood because as the Vincentian component to borrow from the Prime Minister's often used phrase, the Vincentian component of this authentic Caribbean civilization require that we develop a citizen who not only could provide, could provide himself or herself with a decent standard of living, but contribute to national development. In fact, in fact, the Caribbean as a whole, through CARICOM, we, I'm sure you have heard of it, talking about producing the real, or the ideal Caribbean citizen. All that is part and parcel 
of the whole idea of us living and celebrating a Caribbean civilization. The retreat was organized and hosted by the Curriculum Development Unit within the Ministry of Education. The unit allows for teachers to make thoughtful and methodical approaches to determine what students will be required to learn at the early phases of the process and involves deep research and analysis to ensure that students get the best education possible. Reporting for the API's Ion Government, I am Yinka Chambers. Beautiful white and black sand beaches, lush mountains and valleys, rivers, hidden waterfalls, and multiple islands and islets, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are a friendly people, welcoming tourists from all over the world with exotic boutique and luxury hotels and a hospitable business environment. Let's make all tourists welcome at our international airport, on cruises, on yachts, on sailboats, on land and sea tours, at beach lines, at our restaurant shops and bars, and at our national festivals. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Tourism is everyone's business. Live it, love it, embrace Tourism it. Tourism is everyone's business. Yeah. Live it, love it, embrace it. Welcome back. The just concluded school band showcase has been hailed a success. Some future stars have certainly emerged from the performances. Chevrolet McMillan spoke with three of the top performers at the Victoria Park. So I'm sitting at the Victoria Park with another one of our young performers from the just concluded school bands showcase. And what a fantastic day that was right here at Victoria Park where we certainly got to see that. The future is in good hands. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good. What's your name? My name is Crystal Warren. Crystal, where are you from? I am from Calder. Calder. And you attend the Calder Government School? Yes, please. Okay. What class are you in? I am in grade four. Grade four. And who's this lady here with you? My mom. Your mom? What's her name? Her name is Ranasha. Ranasha, all yes. right. And your mom is very proud of you, isn't she? Yes, please. Uh huh. Um, you remember being here at Victoria Park singing? Yes. Uh, how was that? How did it go for you? Good. You enjoyed it? Yes, please. Who told you that you were going to sing for your school? How did you find out? Was it your teacher? Was it your mommy? Was it the principal? My teacher. Your teacher. All right. And who wrote your song? Miss Murray. Miss Murray. Miss Murray is your teacher as well? Yes, please. So what did she say to you? She said to me, do you want to sing ah. the soccer? And what did you say? Yes, please. You like singing? Yes. Why? Because it makes me feel good. It makes you feel good. Do you think you make other people feel good when you sing? Yes, please. And does that feel good to you? Yes. Yeah, that's great. You have a great voice. Did anybody tell you that? Yes. Yeah? All right. So what kind of songs do you like to sing the most? you have a favorite song? Every song is my favorite. Wow. Do you like all kinds of music? Mm. Where do you listen to music? Like, do you listen to music on the radio, on YouTube? YouTube. YouTube. All right. Does your mommy help you pick out your music or you do it by yourself? I do it by myself. Oh, great. All right. So, so now that you came here, uh, what was the name of the song that you performed? Don't Post It. Don't Post It. Mm, what's that about? Could you sing a little piece for us? Yes. And you remember it? Yes. You remember it, good. Don't post it, mind your business. Don't post it, mind your business. Don't post it. Don't post it. Don't post it, mind your business. Don't post it, mind your business. Don't post it. Don't post it. <laughs> ah, you like that song? Yes. What do you like most about it? Is it the beat or you like the words, the lyrics? The words. The words? Yes. And your teacher wrote that? Yes. Your teacher is a good writer? Yes, please. 
What about your other, stu your other fellow students in your class and in your school? What did they think about your performance at the park? They think, they said to me, I do good, mm -hmm. and they like it. And they like it. Yeah. But some of them were here? Were they here to see you? No, please. No? Did they watch it online? I think so. Okay. And what about your mom and your your family members, your relatives, were they, were they here watching you? Yes, please. How did that make you feel? Happy. I know. What did your mommy say about your performance? She said that I do good. Uh, how did that make you feel? Very happy. Very happy. Nice. I like that. So, when you're not singing, what do you like to do other than singing? I like to do my reading. You read? You like books? Yeah. What kind of books do you like? All kind of books. Wow. I love that. That's fantastic. And um, now it's uh, Easter vacation. You're home from school. Uh, you like to play? Yes, please. What kind of games do you play? Do you I go don't... outside and play? Yeah. Wow. What kind of games do you play outside? Hide and seek. Hide and seek? It's been a while since I play hide and seek. Who do you play that with? Your friends? Your cousins? Or... My friends and my cousins. That's fantastic. All right. Um, so. When it comes to singing and performing soca or calypso, you think you want to do that again? Yes. Yeah, you want to go back on the stage? Yes. So we might see you in the junior calypso competition, the junior soca monarch competition? Yes. Well, you did, a, you did very, very well. You were excellent and we loved your performance. And mommy did it, right? Mommy, you did? I did. Uh, see? Mommy's proud of you. Ah. Thank you very much for coming on with us. Okay. Hi, my name is Omani Kipid. I am from Richmond Park. I attend Emmanuel High School, Mesopotamia. I am 13 years old. This is my dad, Gasnel Kipid. Well, hi, this is Jussi, father of Omani Kipid. Now, from time to time, we, whenever we are together, we are involved in music. And you know, music is in me. As you know, Chanel Mackenzie is my daughter. So in order to continue the process, I, one day I say to Omani, would you like to sing Calypso? I say, yes, I would love to sing Calypso. I say, you sure you could make it? I say, yes. So I started humming, humming some songs. I started to hum after me, and you know, and we continue that way. That's how the journey really began. I started to sing in 2019. Um, first in primary school, at, uh, I will attend at Fayal Government School, and my song was Please Save the Earth, Mankind Please Save the Earth. I enjoyed singing in 2019, but because of the corona thing, I, I didn't get to sing in 2020. 2020. Well, you know, as a father, when your son performs and he, he did well, you will always have that feeling that he is the winner. Um, he had some tears after that, but um, I told him, um, this is just the starting, you know, um, you may be a crowd favorite at times, but the judges does not see it that way. Um, he continues to practice other different styles, but you know, um, I prefer Calypso. Um, so I had this song before, and um, we sit down many times and spoke about the Caribs. Um, and on one engagement, he said, um, But Daddy, I have never heard of any Chateau. So I said, That is true. See, uh, my great-great-grandfather is from Fancy, and his name was Aaron Baptiste. He went to Trinidad and he died down there. But I travel the length and breadth of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and never heard of a chateau. Even you go to the news bulletin wherein some official 
travel to, to Belize and Guatemala and there is no shuttle. So I said to him, um, should we do a calypso on that? And he said, yes, daddy, brilliant. So I start writing from there on. I enjoy being on stage, singing. Um, thank you for my friends come out and have fun with me while performing on the stage. I want to continue Calypso in the future and Soka because I just love, I love music. So I want to continue in the future. I have uh, Shannon Mackenzie is my sister. She do um, Calypso, Soka and she perform very well. That made me feel happy and I want to be one day, I want to be like her. I will be competing against him this year. Oh, we, we are in the same Calypso tent. So, um, you know, as a child don't beat parents. So I'm going to make sure that he, he make sure that he doesn't get past me, you know? <laughs> you know, but um, we there, we're going to be working hard. One to look for. My name is Dina Nero. I'm from Pike Village. Yeah. So I like about music. And my music is more swingy. I come by Victoria Park to sing my song. Yeah. And I have, I do plenty things. Okay. I dance, I sing, yeah. Um, this is Dean O'Neill, as he says. He is one of my students at the um, Sandy Bay Secondary School. And um, he is here with us because of the school band showcase that took place where he participated in the soca category which he didn't have much time to walk, but he did show interest. And the concept of his song actually came about in one of our music classes. We were doing pan, and one of the other students were leaning on the, the pan stand with the pan and swinging it. So we, I said to the student, why are you swinging the song, the pan like that? And his, his voice was, you think you're the pan a swingy? Yeah, so I'm not swing pan pan. So I say, you think you're the pan a swingy? Yeah. So my teacher tell me, you know that to make a music, so I say, thank you. <laughs> and then right away we started to work some lines uh, in the song, and we put it together right there basically, and I went home and just finished it up touch it up, put in a rhythm and, and came back to him and said, you know, this is what I am. And we started to work. Well, at the Sandy Bay Secondary School, um, I teach music, and that involves pan, um, the band, calypso, soca, everything about music, that's what I do. And I try to keep the kids um, involved like during the lunch time, I would take them, instead of having them running up and down, getting into trouble, I would take them, I would work with them, and that's how we get going. That's how we keep our, our standards up. Over the years, Sandy Bay Secondary School have been participating in the Junior Calypso. We hardly have any time since 2013 where we didn't have five and six and seven people in that show, kids in that show. And um, well, 20, after 2019 came COVID 2020, and we had already ready for that show. We had already prepared. My kids had learned their songs, but um, we all know that that didn't come off. So, um, and then 2021 came the eruption, and um, a lot of our equipment, I should say most of our equipment, was damaged. And right now, I have been using my equipment and they themselves got damage and um, we are in the process of rebuilding. We don't even have a steady computer and all of that kind of stuff. Our guitars, we just got a new guitar from Rodney for the show. Our mixer, we just got one to borrow from him also. So I mean we are actually down but we are not staying down, we are rising. We are getting up out of that ash. That's not going to hold us down. I feel so good, yeah. I've been feeling frightened because when I reach on the stage, I get on a little bit good. Yeah, I see some of my friends when I've been in camp. 
here, I see some, and I, when I see some, I feel more glad. So I say, I mean, okay, like, keep back down, I say, I'm coming up, Sean. Yeah. Well, um, when I spoke with his grandmother, I said, Dino has a voice, and um, I'm going to try to help him to, to raise himself you know, with that voice. And um, he accepted the challenge, and he, we walked, and he is continuing to, to develop. Even um, last Saturday, Saturday, yeah, Saturday we had the show at Sandy Bay. I, I had him performed at Sandy Bay at um, a remembrance um, volcanic thing that they had in Sandy Bay, and he didn't, run from it, he came into it, <laughs> you know, so he's accepting what he has become, and um, no, we didn't more see of God, we are going to continue to work, I'm going to be preparing him for the Junior Calypso show, um, Junior Soka Monarch, and um, we're hoping that this spirit that he has will, will, will continue to flow with him, and he will grow and get to love the art farm as much as I do. <laughs> Don't go away. Iron government continues after the break. Diabetes is among the top three leading causes of death. Are you living with diabetes? If so, you may be at risk for developing complications, especially during this COVID pandemic. Let's tackle this problem by complying with taking your medication, increasing your physical activities, increasing eating a balanced and nutritious diet, checking your feet as foot care is important, and contacting your healthcare provider. Remember, diabetes can lead to blindness, amputation, and numerous harmful and life-threatening effects. Protect yourself. Know your numbers. Heart's Movement SVG reminds you to love your body and treat it right. Your health is shared responsibility. Welcome back. You are watching the APIs Iron Government. The fireworks have died down from the inter-primary and secondary school sports last Thursday and Friday. But the celebrations continue for the successful athletes and schools. Let's meet a few of them now with Chevron McMillan at the Sir Vincent Beach Athletic Track. Hello, my name is Misha Kin. This is my son Romal James. He is a senior champion and Victor Lodora of the Central Leeward Secondary School. Hello people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. My name is Romal James. Since I was seven years old, I was interested in the sports, track and field. Mommy used to send me outside to play with me. My friends, my neighbors, I used to run up and down all over the roads, come up the steps and the hills them. He um, used to take part, he used to put in his teachers in a lot of races where he used to be triumphant. Um, in um, grade six, he got senior champ and Victor Lodorum 2016-2017 also that leads him into secondary school so from since he entered school from kindergarten age he, he well I realized he started to roll because he didn't walk when he was a baby he didn't get up and creep he get up and run and that's how he started to walk and from that he never stopped <laughs> running he can always continue to run every time you you hear footsteps is his running behind the houses, running on the road, it, he always running. Over the years from primary school, I think grade five, I stopped running because people, I used to frighten because people, people used to be bigger than me and taller over me. So I used to stop. So when I reached farm one now, um, Chester Morgan put me to run intermediate with the bigger boys. Yeah, and that way, I gave more confidence in running. <laughs> Jumping. Mom, they right by my side tell me, don't be frightened now. This, do, do this, do make people, all the boys, they afraid you. Know, and just go out and do my best. Yeah. Since I was little, she always been there. When I come in far one, I never used to go training, but I saw the time now, I start to see my friends then go training. I start to go training and just train from there on. Um, when my school had sports, I have been have a slight injury to my shoulder, so I didn't get to perform well in the certain races and in um, all the awards. I placed first for the 200 and inter-secondary. 
I came second for the long, second for the triple, and second for the four. That made me feel pretty good. I almost jumped over the, the bar there because usually when he run, I always long side on the, on the track or on, long side the park. So I was pretty, pretty excited. Um, every time I see him run, it's, it's, it's an exciting feeling because I know he has the ability and I know he can push himself. Even though he gets a little fearful, he can push himself. So I always shout Roma, so when he hears the sound of my voice, he, he will know I'm there to support and he needs to, to push himself further. So I was very excited about it. Romal is a very, very calm person. Nothing trouble him, nothing bother him. For, for you to, to see Romal achievements, it's always on the track or on the field. He's not a talkative person. He's always towards, yes please, no please, and that's it. So to hear him talking, you know, that's why I keep smiling <laughs> most of the time. Yeah, so that's how he is. He's a very cool and humble child. Very manly. Strict. <laughs> yeah, sometimes strict. Sometimes he <laughs> let me go all anywhere I want. Yeah. But she's strict most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a good thing? Yeah. I would like to get a scholarship to go overseas or anywhere in the region. My athletic hero is Christopher Taylor from Jamaica. Well, I always have, um, physically, emotionally, I always um, support Romal. I always have his back. Any, any, um, decision he decided to make. I always there to encourage him. I always support him. I always give him, you know, my, my, my opinion. Like sometimes he gets fearful and I say, let me tell you, you can do all things to Christ who strengthens you. So that is, I encourage him with the, the Bible verses and the words and that is how he, he go forth. I always tell him before he start anything, I always pray about it. When he get on the track, before he start his race, when he go down, pray about it. So I will always support him and back him. No matter any distance he, he wants to take his career, I'll always be there for him. Big up Chester Morgan, my fantastic coach. He pushed me through all of this. So I won't be here now if, if it wasn't because of him. I big up my friends them, because then they motivate me in the group chat before the uh, inter-secondary school. Hi everyone. My name is Kevin Beatty. This is my daughter Katria Beatty. Uh, Katria won this year's 2022 Inter Primary Under 11 Girls Championship. She was also the joint victress Ladorium for the tournament. Hi, my name is Katria Bailey. I'm not, I'm 10 years old. I go to the Kingston Preparatory School and I'm in grade 5. The, the old saying say that the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. So maybe in a former national athlete and also record holder at this at this venue. Um, would have given her the drive or the impetus to really um, pursue perhaps in her father's footstep along with her sister. I like to run because it makes me happy and that's just my dream because one day I would like to run for St. Vincent and support my country. My prep school sport was good because I won all of my races and I got what I got to do what I like. We always talk about sports home, we always talk about track home, we always um, challenge the other sister as, um, as well so it's it's in the family. Originally she had loved, um, she, she loves gymnastics so she's not only a track and field athlete but she's also a gymnast. And the, gym, and, and the gymnastic helps a lot in the off season when we didn't have any training for track and fish. It basically helped in her fitness and her flexibility as well. So even though during the pandemic and during the volcanic ac activities, we were doing um, activities at home and so forth because, you know, it is very costly and, and difficult for them to adjust during that period. I like to go to the beach and jog and do gymnastics. Yeah. Gymnastics has been, before I even started to run, I do gymnastics. And I, when I was five, I started, I started and I was very good at it. I like to play hide and seek. I play with my sister and my best friend. Into primary, the first time I entered the door, I was very nervous 
But when I step on that track, I give it my all. And I got a lot of support from my family and friends. My biggest cheerleader are my family and my best friends, um, Kalicia and Laura. It makes me feel like if I'm the most important person in the world. When I was finished running, my daddy said I did a good job and I kept focused and I gave it my all. It makes me feel encouragement and I feel like if I have support. As part of the preparatory phase, we would hype her, we hype her, you know, what to do, um, driving phase, because as young as she is, she understands the different phases well, uh, because of, um, I've introduced them to it. The driving phases, I told her to, you know, keep her, her chin in her, in her chest, keep her head down, Dragon phase, you know, we understand uh, when it coming to the, the end to dip and so forth. So I have seen she have executed those. Um, we looked at the phases, how to run the 300 meters. So, you know, we have talked about that, um, spoke about that um, at home. And she have gotten the support from her sister as much as that is. So she was well prepped and well um, informed and she was ready for it. So. I'm, I'm elated to, to know that what we spoke about home was executed. So it made me feel proud that she was, she was listening thoroughly. She was listening and um, she, would have, she would have executed what we spoke about at home. So it gave me great joy to see that um, she would have followed that and also she would have followed in her dad's footstep. <laughs> All right. My name is Will Danrick Samuel, the head coach for Chumoka Ontario Secondary School. And I'm here to introduce you to our top female intermediate athlete, Vikisha Kelly. That's me. Hello. Hi, my name is Vikisha Kelly. I am attending Chumoka Ontario Secondary School and I'm in Farm 3. I start running in primary school around grade 5 because I come from a family of sports people and athletics. So. I decided I should start running. My mom know Miss Marley, so he at grade six, my mom asked him if I could come train with him. So and he agreed. From the first day I had Zeki Shakelly from grade six. I always knew that she was always a gifted athlete. Um, when we began for most athletes as usual, it would be difficult for some because when we are doing some of the drills in athletics. Most athletes in the beginning would say that they know how to run until they actually learn how to run properly. And when we start walking from the basics and doing the drills, it was a bit challenging in the start. But as she got into it and she started to train more, she started to feel more comfortable with the other senior athletes. She started learning a lot from them and also from myself as the coach with the demonstrations. Then we started competing more where she started to feel more comfortable not only in the training sessions but also on the track. And I'm actually happy at this moment that she could actually be the Inter champ because her first year in Farm 1 actually, she came into the Inter heats being the top junior athlete with the fastest time with the 1000 meters. But unfortunately due to COVID she did not get to compete. So after two years coming back for the first time in the finals with this, purpose, um, with this performance, I'm very proud. She's usually a well-behaved student and she's also the top student in her farm. She usually comes for us all the time. When I'm not training, I'll be home studying. I'll even want to think that I haven't done as yet in school. I want to continue with athletics. If not, I would like to become a businesswoman because my favorite subject is math. Well, I was pretty happy when I was called the intermediate champ and everyone around us was telling me congratulations and I deserved it. As a coach, it was something from my side that was actually expected because, as she said earlier, from the previous meet, she has been doing pretty well. And also, I know she has not peaked that yet because with the upcoming competitions that we have, I expect her to even run even better times. And I actually felt proud knowing that for the dedication that she has put in because we usually train five days per week, Monday to Thursday. They would have a rest day on Friday and would train Saturday as well and Saturday mornings. So after so much months of training and getting the reward that she really deserves and did, I was very happy. Thank you all for supporting me from Leeward and also the countryside. You got my mom too. <laughs> <laughs>
want to challenge you to a race on the track right here, right now. Okay. Let's do this. Oh, she, she ready for me. Let's do this. 100 meters. We should do 50 meters. I didn't think I can make 100. 150 meters. 50? Yeah, 50 is good. Muscle, muscle. Ah. I let her win. I let her win. She ain't doing that. Be the champ. She deserves to be the champ. Trust me. I didn't realize it's so hot. Oof. Very hot. And that's how we end the APIs and government. Thank you for viewing. If you've missed any of our past programs, you can catch these on our YouTube or Facebook pages at API SVG. And don't forget to tune in to Man and SVG on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Stream live on API's YouTube and Facebook page. Until next time, I am Bavin Oliver to have a good evening.